Hello, it's Michael Watts here, and in this video I'm going to do a detailed comparison of my guitars by Jason Castell. First up we have number 32, the big modified Dreadnought, which takes its name from the serial number. This was the 32nd guitar that Jason Costell made under his own name. It was created during his apprenticeship with Irvin Samaji, and in fact it's one of only a handful of instruments that bears an apprenticeship label. <laughs> This guitar is what we call a modified dreadnought. If you're not familiar with that term, I do have another video here on my channel where I look at it in some detail. But basically, it's a design that was created by the legendary luthier Irvin Samoji back in the 1970s, and it is at its heart a dreadnought for the fingerstyle player. I sweated blood on that guitar. I mean, I really thought and worked as hard as I could. Evidently, I hit the nail on the head because he was very happy with the result. Hmm. And a new model of a guitar was born. In practical terms, this gives me access to the phenomenal bass response and muscular timbre of a great dreadnought, but in a format that makes it more accessible uh, in the long term for a fingerstyle player. But it's not all about the bass. This guitar gives me a huge amount of headroom and dynamic range to explore as well. <laughs> The back and sides of this guitar are made from quilted mahogany from the tree, and I have an in-depth look at that wood in another video on my channel as well. Eventually, and perhaps inevitably, uh, examples of this beautiful wood started to make their way into the workshops of guitar luthiers, uh, with instrument makers such as Richard Hoover of the Santa Cruz Guitar Company, uh, the archstock builder Tom Rebecki, uh, Harvey Leach and the late Lance McCullum being amongst the pioneers. I'm a massive fan of mahogany guitars. My first proper steel string was a uh, Martin D15, one of the first ones to come into the UK. And uh, let's face it, when it comes to mahogany, the tree is pretty much as uh, spectacular as it gets. <laughs> This is a 14 fret guitar with a 25.25 inch scale length. I do play a lot of 12 fret guitars as well though, normally with a 25 inch scale length, but it's nice every once in a while to come back to the rich muscular tone of a 14 fret. <laughs> Like his mentor Irvin Samoji, Jason uses a double-sided construction technique, and the inner sides of both my coastal guitars are ebony, which you can see when you're looking through the sound hole. The original plan was for the inner sides to be made from quilted mahogany as well, uh, but something had happened during the bending process. I can't quite remember uh, if they'd cracked or snapped or scorched. Something uh, had meant that 
it just wasn't workable. And then Jason had the idea of using ebony. He had seen a guitar by Michihiro Matsuda and uh, Michi had used ebony side. So uh, Jason called him to ask if he'd mind uh, using that technique as well. And uh, Michi sort of paused for a moment and said, I don't know what you're talking about. I've, I've never done that. Uh, so I guess it was just a bit of beautiful <laughs> accidental inspiration there. Uh, but as I say, this guitar and the MDW, which we'll look at in a moment, both have ebony inner sides. A lot of people have asked me what that contributes to the sound of the instrument. The difficulty is separating any one variable from these guitars and saying this contributes X amount of whatever. Uh, these are very highly functioning systems. And as such, every tiny bit of it plays a part. Finally, the full fat modified dreadnought is a very large guitar. So I asked Jason to put in Linda Manza's wedge design here. So it's shallower on this side, deeper on this side, which makes it a lot easier to get across. A lot of people have used it because as a lot of people are getting older, they don't want to reach over right. and it, you can just keep your arm. Also, the, you know, the, the point where your arm can sit on the pointy part of the guitar and pinch the nerve, there's less chance of that happening. We've got a K and K pickup in here. I love that he's completely passive, no batteries to rattle around and smash your bracing. Uh, just a great design and they sound good too. I asked for quite a chunky neck on 32 and Jason delivered exactly that. As you can see towards the seventh and ninth frets, it's a bit of a beast uh, and that's really comfortable for my left hand, exactly what I asked for. This guitar features Jason's beautiful headstock design. It was the first instrument that he made to have this two-tone effect, seen here in Ebony and the Tree. I had asked if this was possible. He said he wasn't sure, but he'd give it a go. That's exactly what happened. Uh, and that wouldn't be the last time we had a conversation along those lines. <laughs> Still got the baby book that came with the guitar showing all the uh, stages of the construction. There's Jason. Oh, and there's the uh, ebony inner sides I was telling you about. Very cool. So, yeah, we've got all this beautiful information about the creation of the instrument. This guitar is the Kostel MDW. It's my signature model, and it's the result of a really intense uh, collaborative process between Jason and myself to design a new instrument. In terms of necessity being the mother of invention, well, just about every musical necessity that I had encountered or could imagine was very well covered indeed by 32. So when Jason suggested we collaborate on a second instrument, 
it was a little difficult to think, you know, what I might need, where we would go with this guitar. But the prospect of the sweet, delicate textures of a smaller body guitar, 12 fret neck and 25 inch scale length, well, that was, you know, too good to resist. Of course we had to explore it. As with number 32, we have a German spruce soundboard. At the time, that's all that Jason was really building with. He has branched out a bit since, and recently he's even gone as far as Redwood on this beautiful looking OM. I knew I wanted maple, but uh, I hadn't decided what kind. So I said to Jason, you know, give me maple with everything, quilted, bird's eye, flame, the lot. Uh, and we thought it didn't exist. And then one day he was at a guitar show, I think it was uh, LMI, had a couple of sets of this incredible stuff. Uh, and he bought them both. And uh, my understanding is that he has since used the second set as well. I know it's heartbreaking, isn't it? But these things do happen. I know a lot of people might be surprised at the use of maple for a fingerstyle guitar. Uh, you really shouldn't be because in the right hands, it is one of the best sounding woods you can experience. It really is magical. At first glance, this might seem to be a more compact instrument. Yes, the body is smaller, but it retains a dreadnought depth. And uh, Jason and I had spoken throughout the design process about the idea of a manzel wedge in this instrument. Uh, I think quite rightly, uh, Jason asked to make one without the wedge, first of all, because this was the first time we tried the model and he wanted to cut down the number of variables and really understand what was going on with this design. A slight tangent, but a point worth making, I think. Uh, this was an entirely bespoke build, so a completely new model created for me by Jason. And I know, I know how hard he worked on this, and I am massively grateful for it. <laughs> Here you can see the MDW headstock in ebony and maple. Goto 510 tuning heads are standard on both guitars. I'm often asked if the sculpted nut on a Samoji style guitar makes any real difference. I don't think so, but at the same time it looks awesome and uh, I guess it's a sign that the guitar was made by one of Irvin's apprentices or someone with direct Luthery lineage to uh, his workshop. Once again we've got a K&K pick up in here along with a really beautiful 
geometric butt wedge. Lovely bit of work. I really do hope you've enjoyed this comparison of my Costal guitars. If you have any further comments or questions, do put them in the section below and I'll respond as soon as I'm able. If you fancy one of these, then get in touch with Jason. I know he'll take very good care of you. And in the meantime, please do like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff because it really does help my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay tuned. <laughs>